The Body Shop is one of the best known retailers in the UK, boasting a shop on the majority of Britain's high streets. The founder, Anita Ruddock, nicknamed the Queen of Green, pioneered the natural ingredient cosmetic market and established social responsibility as an integral part of the company's operations, driving the industry to new heights. Let's take a look at how she did it. Roddick was born in an air raid shelter in Littlehampton, Sussex in 1942 to Italian immigrants Gilda and Donny Perilli. As a child, her parents made Anita and her three siblings work in the cafe they ran with similar decor to an early American diner. After her father died, Roddick worked in the cafe and credited the experience to where she received her education of how business works and that you only got out what you put in. The cafe opened at around 5am to feed the fishermen and closed at midnight after the last tourists had gone back to London, with Roddick working long hours. She was an academic at school, but was innovative and wanted to be different. She initially trained to be a teacher at Newton Ark College in Bath and won a scholarship to study in Israel. She then worked in Paris and for the United Nations in Geneva. A spot of travelling followed, which proved pivotal to starting the body shop. Having experienced natural processes used by the locals that broke all the conventions of the skincare industry at the time. She met penniless poet Gordon Roddick in 1968 whilst in Nevada and they later married in 1970 initially running a bed and breakfast and an Italian restaurant. When her husband decided to take a career break and travel to Argentina to ride horseback to New York, Roddick decided to start the body shop as a way to make a living for herself and two daughters whilst her husband was away travelling. Running a shop that opened nine to five would not fit her lifestyle and allow Roddick to look after her two young children. She was not interested in running her business, focused purely on profits. Instead, aiming to sell products that were ethically sourced Cruelty-free, featured natural ingredients, were not tested on animals, and the ingredients were sourced from local producers. While this is now commonplace, in 1976, few of these issues were considered when products were developed for sale. Rulick saw herself as part of an activist movement, campaigning for better processes and procedures when it came to product testing and development. The inspiration from Body Shop came from previous experiences travelling abroad and seeing the local people wash their bodies and hair with similar ingredients being sourced for the first batch of products. Rolick did not have the money to open the initial shop, so she went to the bank to ask for a £4,000 loan with her children dressed in jeans and a t-shirt. The bank said no, so Rolick brought her husband along and the bank later agreed. The first shop was small and located between two funeral parlours, who tried to get her to change her name, as it was disrespectful to the dead bodies passing the shop on a daily basis. The body shop began trading with only 25 products, but offered five sizes to boost the number of products on the shelves, and Roddick purchased urine sample bottles from a nearby hospital to sell her products in. However, she did not have enough money to buy more, and solved this problem by creating the business's refillable bottle policy, where customers did not have to pay. She painted the walls of the shop dark green to hide the cracks, and wrote the labels on products in order to save on costs, describing one product as smelling like manure, but being great for your hair. The name for the company came from the US, where most garages had a workshop to carry out repairs. Roddick's initial shop in Brighton also had a small shop front, so only a short name would fit. In the early days, Roddick did not advertise the business, instead relying on local press to bring in customers. She learned to tell stories that journalists loved to report on, ranging from being attacked by mafia undertakers to people thinking the body shop was Brighton's first sex shop. The business was popular with ethically minded conscious consumers who shared Ruddock's views on ethics and sustainability. The initial aim was to survive for two years whilst her husband travelled so they could then emigrate to Australia and buy a pineapple plantation. She took £300 a week to pay for rent and to ensure there was always enough money to pay for future products. If takings didn't hit the target, Ruddock would make gift baskets and go door to door to make up the amount. In 1977, Ruddock wanted to open a second body shop store in Chichester but didn't have the money to do so. She sold 50% of her first store to a local garage owner, also to be one of the boyfriends of Roddick's employees, in order to fund the venture. The backer went on to reap the rewards of his success. Roddick's husband, Gordon, returned from travelling and suggested that the business could grow quickly through franchising and make money by selling products to new stores. Their lack of funding also prompted the idea to grow the company in an efficient manner. 
They chose people from non-business backgrounds to run the franchises who had a different way of thinking to traditional business owners. This proved incredibly successful with 138 stores operating under the body shop name with 87 of these being located outside of the UK. By 1994, franchising accounted for 89% of body shop stores. Roddick flouted industry conventions in order to sell a reported product every four seconds. She loathed the cosmetics industry with a passion, one that was run by men who create the needs that don't exist. By 1984, the body shop was invited to list on London's unlisted securities market and now defunct stock exchange for companies who were too small to qualify for a full listing. Prior to the listing, Roddick viewed success as how many employees they had, but that all changed when the measurements changed in money. Roddick points to the listing as the biggest mistake she made in her career. The body shop later obtained a full listing on the London Stock Exchange and the share price increased drastically, rising by over 10,000% in the first eight years. The body shop was interested in social good rather than pure profits, following in the footsteps of Patagonia and Ben and Jerry's to do good alongside the business of making money. The body shop built a soap factory in Glasgow rather than Turkey, paying very high wages and pumping 25% of the profits back into the local community. However, it wasn't all plain sailing, as the body shop lost market share in the 1990s to competitors who offered similar products at lower prices, resulting in Anita and Gordon stepping down as co-chairs of the business in 2002, but remaining as non-executive directors. As the company grew, Roddick decided to bring production in-house, from making the containers to producing the products. A special focus was placed on sustainability, with old bottles being recycled and turned into new items, such as combs. By 2004, the body shop had 1,980 stores, served over 77 million customers around the world, and offered over 600 ethically-minded products. When the company found that products had been tested on animals, they were immediately pulled from stores and the remaining products sent back to the supplier. The body shop was voted one of the 30 best brands in the world and the most trusted in the UK. As the company developed, Roddick travelled the world, visiting overseas communities to find new products for the business and to do business with. Another shop selling under the name The Body Shop was started in the US prior to Roddick starting The Body Shop in the UK. In 2002, a newspaper article suggested Roddick had copied the name, concept and original brochures from the original body shop started in Berkeley, California, when she had visited in the 1970s. The case was settled when she bought the rights to the body shop in the US for $3.5 million, with the US body shop changing its name to Body Time. In 2006, L'Oreal offered to buy the business for £652 million at £3 per share, a significant premium at the time. In 2003, the shares were languishing as low as 56p. At this point, the body shop had 2,085 branches globally and 304 in the UK. The deal made Gordon and Anita an estimated £130 million, but caused controversy as L'Oreal were known to use animal testing on its products. Roddick defended the acquisition with L'Oreal working towards eliminating the use of animal testing and describing the body shop as a Trojan horse that could further affect change by working inside the company's camp. She pushed for NGOs to be brought into the business of advisors to help end poverty, rather than focusing exclusively on driving greed and only targeting larger and larger profits each year. Roddick did not like talking about her wealth, claiming it's irrelevant and that the only positive aspect of wealth is the ability to pay your bills. She said nothing had motivated her less than money, but rather how far she could push an idea. The decision to sell Body Shop was driven by the opportunity not to die rich and use the money constructively. When Roddick died in 2007 of a brain hemorrhage, she donated all of her money, around £51 million, to charity. Under L'Oreal's control, the body shop was unable to recapture the success of the 1990s and was sold to Brazilian conglomerate Natura in 2017 after a report that the company had alienated customers and lacked the innovative product required to compete. Despite this, Roddick's success should not be underplayed and has laid the foundation for ethical product production, changing the law on animal testing in the UK and laying the foundations for the body shop to potentially come back stronger in the future.